Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how to set up DDWRT as a wireless repeater to extend your Wi-Fi network. Now this can be very useful for spreading good coverage throughout your entire house, including outside, or covering gaps caused by brickwork or masonry. Now let's get started. First we need to gather information from the primary router. I've confirmed that I'm on my network. And I access my router through 192.168.1.254. This is common on AT&T networks. You can Google your ISP to access your router if it's different. Anyways, the information we need to collect is network name, WPA version, password, and mode. As you can see, the name in my network is Skynet20, and it's running WPA2, PSK. It's also running AES encryption, which it doesn't actually specify uh, on the router page, I, I managed to figure that out through trial and error. You may have to do a similar process to figure that out with your router. Anyways, besides that, I also have to worry about mode. Now, mode on the primary router doesn't matter, but it needs to be G in the DDWRT for compatibility with Android devices. Next, we need to disconnect from the primary network and connect to the, uh, the WRT54G on its own. So there we are, we're disconnecting from my main Wi-Fi. We go to network and sharing and we open up properties for the local area connection. And in properties, we go to IP version 4. And I just give it an IP address on its subnet, which is 192.168.1. In this case, I give it 9 in order to ensure that there's no uh, compatibility issues. Subnet mask can be 255, 255, 255, and that's okay. Nothing else needs to be specified. Now once that is done, we can actually go through and connect up an Ethernet cable between the WRT54G and the PC. As you can see down by, uh, on the taskbar, it has made a connection. But of course it does not have outbound access to the internet, but, but that is not necessary at this point. So now we need to navigate to the DDWRT interface, which is 192.168.1.1. Now with mine, I did a hard reset on my WRT54G to ensure that there are no issues with anyone who, who may be trying to use this video to set up a repeater. Now you can do a hard reset on yours, and it should provide the same experience as you see here. Now there we go, the username and password are set up. And as you can see, these are the default settings for the DDWRT. So the first thing we need to do is set up the Wi-Fi networks on the DDWRT. So click on the wireless tab and view its basic settings. The wireless tab is at the top. It has sub-tabs underneath. The one we're on is basic settings. So we need to change wireless mode to repeater bridge. Now as you can see here, the wireless network mode, for this it actually doesn't matter. Because this is the connection to the primary Wi-Fi. But in this case, I set it to G only. And hopefully that will carry over the network mode to the virtual network that we will create. The next thing we do is change the SSID 
to Skynet to, uh, 20 to connect to the main Wi-Fi. After that, we hit save. And from there, we create the virtual uh, repeater Wi-Fi, which is a virtual interface in the DWRT. So for network name, SSID, I tend to call it something similar to the main Wi-Fi. But you shouldn't create, you shouldn't give it the same name as the main Wi-Fi as it can cause uh, compatibility issues. And all the other options are fine. So now it's time to save. And next we go to wireless security. And here we need to take information from the primary router and use that to set up a connection so the DDWRT can connect to it. Now I prefer, there are, are a couple options for WPA2. WPA2 personal mix has issues. It's very buggy, so just personal works just fine. You don't need the mixed for compatibility. For the algorithm, we use a AES. And then we use the password that is uh, required for the, the primary Wi-Fi network. That all looks fine. So we save. The next thing we need to do is set up the repeater Wi-Fi. So the same thing as the uh, the main one, WPA2 personal, we set it to AES, the same as the primary. And I use the same password between both networks. That does not cause compatibility issues, and it makes it easier just trying to go back and forth between them. So now we save the settings. We can go back up to setup. As you can see now, it says that the WAN connection type is disabled and it still has a stock IP setting. So I try to give it um, a non default IP address to make it more difficult for hackers or anyone else to try and get in. I also try to give it an IP address similar to the main router. So 192.168.1.252. And for gateway and local DNS, you want to give it the same IP address as the main router. In this case, that is 192.168.1.254. I also like to go through and assign the WAN port to switch. That is normally like uh, an uplink port it can change that so it's the same as the other switches on there so it gives it another port basically I also like to turn off the NTP client the time settings on there can cause compatibility issues and from there we can finally hit apply and please give it a moment to apply the settings sometimes it has to reset the router as well and now, in order to uh, to surf to it, we need to go to its new IP address, which is 252. And there we are. Now it has the new settings. It is set to repeater bridge G only. For a second there, it showed a connection to the main router, but we haven't specified everything yet, so... That is not going to work just yet. We still need to change a couple other things. 